With Sim Update 10 released in September 2022, Asobo introduced the ability to create multiple cockpit views in independent windows. And this brought FS 2020 finally up to par with the legacy Sims for cockpit builders. Prior to this, the only way to use multiple displays in FS 2020 was to stretch a single 3D display across an array of identical screens using NVIDIA Surround or iFinity or a hardware solution like the Matrox Triple Head to Go. So this was great news and it works well but one thing was and remains conspicuously absent. If you look at how individual windows are configured in P3D or in X-Plane you'll find that in each case we can specify the virtual field of view independently for each window. Now why is this important? Well assuming we're going to display each window on its own screen this determines how the virtual field of view is mapped across the physical field of view of the particular screen. So for example a 32 inch screen occupies about 50 degrees of your field of view depending on how far away from it you sit of course. So if you map 50 degrees of the virtual field of view onto that screen the display is going to look approximately life size. If you display more than 50 degrees of the virtual world, so that's more than 50 degrees of the virtual world spread across 50 degrees of actual display, then the display is going to look less than life size and everything is going to look smaller and further away. And conversely, if you display less than 50 degrees of the virtual world on your 50 degree display, everything is going to look bigger than life size and appear to be closer. And of course these effects are what we typically refer to as a zoomed out or a zoomed in view. Now we can set this mapping in FS 2020 by changing the zoom factor, but this changes the mapping across all of the windows. Now the consequence of this is if we mix different physical sized screens, the images are going to look smaller or larger on different screens. And so at least on first sight, we can't mix different screen sizes if we're using multiple display windows in FS 2020. But that's not the whole story. So we've seen how zoom is the parameter that controls the mapping of the virtual field of view onto the physical display. And it's worth just taking a bit of time out to think about how zoom works. So for now we'll put aside the idea of multiple windows and just think about a single window and we want to think about how the zoom parameter affects what gets drawn within that window. Now by default, in F we think about FSX and prepared for the moment, so the default behaviour in those sims is when the zoom factor is 1.0, a window will always show 34 horizontal degrees of the virtual world. Now there's probably some historical reason why that number is 34 degrees, but that's not important. It's, that's always what we get when zoom is 1.0. So thinking back to what we said earlier, if your window is displayed on a screen that is physically 34 degrees of your field of view wide, it's going to look approximately life size. Now you can check that out. The best way to check that out is to just play around with a window in windowed mode in FSX or prepared and just drag the edges of the window to make it wider and narrower, taller and shorter and you'll see that it always refreshes the window to show that same slice of the virtual world. And of course if you make it wider the image is going to look bigger and if you make it narrower the image is going to look smaller. And as you're doing that you'll notice that you'll see more or less information in the up and down direction depending on the shape of the window. Now you'll notice I said this is the default behaviour in prepared and FSX. But you can change that default behaviour by changing the value of the wide view aspect flag in FSX or the wide view aspect ratio parameter in the user interface of prepared. So if you set that parameter to be on or true, the behaviour changes. And the specific effect of this is to switch things around so that when you resize a window, it will always now display 34 vertical degrees rather than horizontal degrees. In that window and again the best way to experiment with this is to just play with resizing a window and now you'll see that you always get the same top to bottom image drawn when you resize the screen rather than side to side. 
Now this, by the way, is the only thing that that wide view aspect setting does. It has no effect on the projection algorithm or anything about how the view is rendered. But because that window now shows 34 vertical degrees at a, at a zoom of 1.0 rather than 34 horizontal degrees, everything looks way more zoomed out at first sight when wide view aspect is on. But of course if you zoom back in you'll be able to get exactly the same image as you got before. Now there was a lot of chatter about wide view aspect when FS2020 was first released because people continue to believe, wrongly, that wide view aspect increases or decreases distortion in the image. And in fact if you do a bit of digging you will find that there is a wide view aspect flag in the config file. I think it's called flightsimulator.config.cfg. So that setting is there but it doesn't seem to do anything. But that doesn't matter because what you'll also find is if you do the same experiments with dragging the edges of a window to resize it, FS2020 behaves by default as if the wide view aspect flag was on. In other words, we get that fixed vertical field of view maintained regardless of how we resize the window or what shape the window is. So here's the takeaway. In FS2020, for any given zoom factor, we always get the same vertical field of view displayed in the window regardless of the window shape or size. And how much of the horizontal view we see depends on the shape of the window. So if we make the window wider we're going to see more at the left and right. If we make it narrow we're going to effectively crop the image left and right. And of course if we're going to put a window on its own screen that amount of horizontal cropping if you want to call it that, depends on the aspect ratio of the screen. So if we have a super wide screen, we're going to see more real estate out towards the sides. If we have a regular 16 to 9 kind of screen, we're going to see less out towards the sides. Now if you think about that for a minute, a very useful consequence is if we mix physical sizes and aspect ratios of screens and put our individual windows on those screens, as long as the screens are the same, or approximately the same height, the images will appear to be the same size. So in effect we can mix screen sizes as long as we stick to that limitation. So for example we could imagine having an ultra wide screen as the main view, uh, like a 21 to 9 monitor or even wider, and then have a regular 16 to 9 monitor at each side to give us something of a side view. And as long as those screen heights are pretty much the same, then we're going to get a pretty effective uniformly sized view across the board. But it's even more interesting than that. Now here's a display configuration I experimented with in FSX. Now I never got this to work satisfactorily because it used a clunky way of running the side screens on a second copy of F FSX running on a different machine and synchronized, at least in theory, <laughs> with the, the master PC. So now I can run a modified version of this in FS2020, which is what you see here. These three centre screens effectively are one display. It's running on a triple head to go, three 19-inch 5x4 monitors. So that's approximately 4 to 1 aspect ratio. And then at the sides I've got two 16 to 9 or 16 to 10 screens. And because they're the same height as the centre screen, regardless of the aspect ratio, we get roughly the same size of image displayed. Now, what you're going to notice here, and very interestingly, is I've got these monitors in portrait orientation, which means technically, and, and in Windows they're rotated by 90 degrees. So technically, the height is not the same as the centre screen, but somehow that still works. Now, I can't explain why that works exactly. We can only speculate. I have this idea that FS2020 is slightly intelligent. Maybe it keeps track of the major and minor axis of the monitor rather than strictly horizontal and vertical. You know, if it was following that rule, it would be matching the field of view across the minor axes of the monitors, regardless of their orientation. So that maybe that's how it works. But, you know, the point for me is it works. <laughs> and it opens up, just, just opens up new possibilities. So there it is, multiple cockpit views across multiple displays in FS2020, even with displays of different sizes, with widely different aspect ratios and different orientations. So we're still not quite as flexible as prepared or explained because the minor axes 
that the displays do have to match in terms of their physical size but for now at least until we can get full control of that virtual to physical mapping independently for each screen we're in a pretty good compromise.